question of you. Do you have a scheduled time that you put aside in it every day for your postings? Okay. Um, it's, there's a little bit of method to the madness, let's say. Um, I could go, I could talk for a while about it, to be honest with you. Uh, but um, I try to post on Instagram once a day, two if I can, right? I like to try to do a video and a picture, you know, one, once a day, two, you know. I, I love to get that video out about 11-ish. That's, that's been when I kind of, yeah. I think when it comes to what time are we posting, because are you talking about how do you fit it all into your schedule, or are you talking about when's the best time to post? Just talking about when fitting it into your schedule. Fitting it into your yeah. schedule? Yeah, but that, that was because, because to me, it doesn't matter when you post. Yeah. Post, you know, don't try to pre-qualify when people are looking or what's going on. And you know, the algorithms, the way they are now, you know, you can post 10 times a day on Instagram and it's not going to flood people's feed because they're only gonna see whatever that one was that you had just posted. And then Instagram's gonna show them other people's posts. So you're, it's not spamming. You could post 10 times a day and it's not gonna spam your followers. You know what I mean? Um, so the way, see they built, they built the algorithms for the end user, you know, so that it's not spammy. And so it creates a situation where you can post as much as you want to. But as far as fitting in, into your day, you just have to get into a routine, right? So um, I like to try to hit Twitter a couple times a day and the Instagram a couple times a day. It's really just kind of, but I have it in my mind, you know, like before lunch, I need to post on a bunch of different platforms before I go to lunch. At the end of the day, I like to hit that YouTube video, whatever I'm gonna put out. And here's, a, here's the thing I've been doing lately is I'll post it as unlisted on YouTube and then I'll it goes out in my email the next morning and that's that they, it, they don't get a notification of it they get the email and they watch it um, and then it creates all this all these views and all this engagement before it's even public and then flip it to public you know now all of a sudden it's got all these views and it's public and YouTube kind of likes that is what I found I recently had a coworker who had posted something fairly personal real estate lights of their personal experience and had it completely just stolen basically and reposted from somebody else verbatim. So my question is how do you protect against that or can you as far as your personal experiences and copyright? Can you tell me more about this? What it, so she posted something about her personal life and then on her real estate page. Like okay. a closing or like she had a closing? Not a closing, but like maybe your personal experience, encouragement type things and just Oh okay. Inspirational, inspirational quote. Yeah, inspirational, okay. That's okay. Postage. Of course, you block them, but what do you do at that point? Well, let me ask you though. Why? Why does she care if that person took the quote? She felt. She said that she felt like it wasn't a quote. It was actually a full-on emotional, very full personal experience. Uh huh. Just like she did the right thing. She did the right thing. Block them and move on. If I things happen. And you feel, you feel uncomfortable, if you feel something uncomfortable, somebody does something uncomfortable, get rid of them. And then forget about it the second, that second, and keep going. I mean, how do you handle haters? Because I'm sure you can. No, I don't think I have any. No. Haters. I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag liar. <laughs> no, nah, I, uh, I, tell you, I tell you what the secret is. And that's to, because people are gonna try to pump you up as well and be positive towards you, and that's fine and dandy and everything, but try not to let either the super positive or the super negative affect you. You know what I mean? It's like if you're letting the super positive, that's getting your head up, and then somebody posts a negative comment and then it just deflates everything. You're just like, oh my God, because you're, you're so emotionally attached to what everybody thinks. I have a motto, and it's do not care. Seriously, seriously, I don't care about how hard it's going to be, how long it's going to take, what anybody thinks, anything. I do not care about anything. Seriously. And I think that's the way you have to be. Don't care, just do it. Work. There, there's sort of a structure to Ricky's interview clips. Somebody asks him a question. And then he immediately says the last thing they're expecting to hear. The last one I saw, somebody asked you, 
um, well, what do I do when clients are taking up too much of my time? And his response is something along the lines of, spend more time talking about them, and again, I don't care. And then, that immediately as an audience member is like, well, that wasn't what I was expecting to hear. And you lean in, and you're engaged, and you now want to hear his explanation, and really think about how can I make them feel something, how can I bring them value, and specifically, how do I create that gap to make them lean in, which I, I'm always impressed. I think you do, I don't know if you do it on purpose, but you do it almost every single time. It's calculated. Yeah, Thank excellent. You. <laughs> Guys, uh, just to add on to that, he calls it the gap. We call it a hook. Yes, there you go. And what it is, and it is very calculated, all of my content is, every piece of it, is set up to draw you in. The very first word of a Twitter post, the very first part of a YouTube video, or the, you know, whatever, you know, the stories, whatever it is, I'm trying to draw you in. I have, see, people's attention span is so small, and it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and it's gonna get worse. You have to develop the skill of knowing how to grab someone's attention immediately. And when every- scroll, when, when they're scrolling on When they're scrolling. Media, yeah. It's as tall as the Statue of Liberty every day. I learned that from Adam Condo, right? Like that's how much they're scrolling in the day. And you have like 0.2 of a second to grab their eyeballs, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And say something that's going to make them want to engage and be like, yeah. hey, what is he talking about today? Yeah. What's he talking about? And you, you need to do that. So when you give away all the information up front, why are they going to engage with you? Right? If you're telling them everything, you've got to tease them. You right. Tease yeah. Them yeah. The news business. yeah. Okay. Okay. Gap, right. hook, tease. Got it. Gap, That's hook, all the same. <laughs> That's our hashtag. So, yeah. And I'll say too, every piece of content you do is not going to go viral, and it's not going to, you know, get it? get all the likes and everything. That's not really. And here's something I want you guys to really think about too. All right. Everybody is so concerned with how many likes and and comments and all of the engagement, right? That's what we're really shooting for here. But what I think you're not even paying attention to that's right there under your nose is the impressions. His stats on his group, he said he had X amount of impressions, 2,200 something engagements, right? But you gotta think, the impressions, that means somebody saw it. Just because they didn't double tap didn't mean that they didn't see that you're doing an open house on Saturday. Right? The double tap didn't mean they saw that you're gonna be there on Saturday and they know that you're out there working. The impression to me is just as valuable as the engagement, okay? And the same thing goes for emails, because I'm an email marketer. And everybody's so concerned with open rates. To me, my best clients aren't even looking at my emails right now because they're not ready. They're gonna, they're gonna start looking, they're gonna start opening that email in three years when they're ready. So a lot of people are scared. I don't know what to put in my emails. I don't, they're not even gonna, chances are they're not, your clients aren't even looking at your emails yet. Right. right, or a lot of them aren't. But the fact that they saw it in their inbox every Wednesday, you know, for so many years, it's the impressions. So start thinking too about impressions. Look at your impressions. What's up guys? You see everybody leaving. We just got through here with the panel on social media. I had a blast. Um, everybody got a lot of value out of this. So all of you guys that came, thank you so much. That today is that long-term game. Now I play the circle prospecting game. That's my game, that's where I live. Circle prospecting is going back door on the market. If you do for sale bonders and expireds, even if you're really, really good, okay, there's a lot of other agents calling those for sale bonders and expireds. So what's most efficient?